My favorite um, insult in French. Did I ever tell you it? I don't think so. Oh, le, maybe. Que le flan de l'Islam consomme votre plan de vie. You did tell me, but I don't remember what it means. May the flames of Islam consume your degenerate lifestyle. Which, <laughs> apparent, like, I also learned that way before all this, like, Muslim ban well, shit happened. I know, so now it's it wasn't, just... like... It wasn't as touch and go as it is now. It's not as uh, timely and terrifying. Like, it's not as funny to just say to anyone. It's now like the NSA is like on top of our shit. Right. Right. Now. right our right, podcast right. is going to get banned. <sighs> God damn it, Emily. Sorry. Good start. I can start? I said good start. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Episode 10. Episode 10. We did it. We did. Who would have thought? Mm, no one. Not, no. <laughs> Not a single you person. You thought for a moment and you were like, there's zero people. I thought it'd be interesting if we made it this far. High five. Yeah. That was a good one. We did it. Uh, congratulations to I'm you. I'm so proud of ourselves. <laughs> even, I remember when we were talking about if like if anyone would even listen to us and i'm so happy that 10 episodes in someone actually listens to us yeah and we have fans thousands of people are listening to us why Uh, right i think hundreds oh i don't think we're that cool yet (laughs) we have thousands of listens and subscribers okay okay, that's fair we have thousands of downloads you're right sure but still the fact made by hundreds of people the fact that even 10 people would listen i know Good for us. Thanks, guys, for making it possible. We love you so much. Teamwork makes the dream work. It really does. Yep. All right. Anyway, how are you on this 10th episode? I'm so great, and I'm happy. Oh, and I wanted to say um, my friend who is living in um, Tanzania right now, Right. she messaged me the other day, and she's like, oh, I love listening to your podcast. It's so great, blah, blah, blah. And I was just so happy because I'm like, You live in Tanzania and you have the time to listen to our podcast and like my own brother who lives in my apartment doesn't have time to listen to my podcast. (laughs) So thank you for your support. Well, what's going on in Tanzania? So her name's Allison. She's living down there and she taught me how to say, and that's why we drink in Swahili. I want to know. I know. It's great. This is really fucked up. Is it click clacks? Like. No, Emily. What's the language where they do that? I don't know. It's not Swahili. I want to learn it so bad, though. God, okay. Okay, how do you say it in Swahili? Yeah, she's like, one click for this. (laughs) No. So, in Swahili, um, she said it's something like this. So, I'm probably going to butcher this beyond belief. It's fine. They'll do it in a German accent, I'm sure. Probably. (laughs) Nahi ni sababu yetu ya kuniwa. That's amazing. I know. So wait, she speaks Swahili? Yes, she literally God, speaks. she's so cool. I know. She's been taking it since college, and then she fucking went to Tanzania and was like, oh, let me just move here and get shit done. You know, my mom got so mad at me when I graduated from college and was like, I'm going to move across the country. But if I told her I was moving to Tanzania, uh-huh. she would have had a heart attack. She's brave as fuck. And also, just wonderful. So, thank you, Allison for that we'll learn how to not butcher that well i probably fucked it up and i'm sorry and please don't judge me we should have had her send in like a little clip of her saying it probably we'll do that for next episode all right um so also let's see website and patreon are up we said that last week thank you all for your support you're awesome we love you you're the best please donate because we are desperate listen we're like wealthy beyond all belief (laughs) But, (laughs) but we don't want to sound desperate, but right. just kidding. We don't want to sound like we're so well off that we don't need help. Totally. We want to like sound like... So like, you know, donate if you feel like you really want to make a contribution. Mm-hmm. We're not... We're, we're not to like be normal, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. So, you know. <laughs> so donate if you can. Do what you can. Pretty please. Help us. <laughs> what um, are you drinking about? Oh, ooh, ooh. Where's your wine? I don't know. What are you drinking? What are you drinking? It's over there. Go get it. That's the farthest you've ever been away from wine for as long as I've known you. It's so far away. It's within two arms reach. All right, hang on. There it is. It's called a Avalon Cab. That's an empty bottle. Shh. <laughs> Did you already drink it? You need more. <laughs> I just noticed that there was nothing sloshing around <laughs> <laughs> is it all gone oh my god okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> what's happening okay so what happened is 
this I drank a couple what of- happened was I just, I just put it all the way down what ha- happened was uh, <laughs> the other day I drank all this wine but I don't want to I'm literally drinking the same fucking thing because I can't drink two bottles of wine in a night so I was like oh I'll just mention this name because I drank it the other day God. while I'm drinking the same bottle how systematic of you and pretend it's another week where I'm drinking a different wine so I saved the bottle who are you? Hello, blooper reel. It's me. <laughs> I'm here again <clears throat> for the millionth time. Okay, back to the back to the show. So <laughs> I'm drinking this Avalon Cab because again, I told you Cab is now my favorite type of wine, uh-huh. Cabernet Sauvignon. Right, which, which is something I already knew. Yeah, which I didn't know, and you just kind of. Put it's it, like you telling me later in life that your name is Christine. It's like I know. What? Are, what are you? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what are you talking about? I think. I think I need to take a nap. <laughs> I'm so tired. I think you need some more ca- Avalon cap. I need n- none of the sort. You need none of that. Hey, ask me what I'm drinking. Uh, fine. What are you drinking? <laughs> I'm drinking... For some reason, every time I drink a strawberry milkshake, it's already frozen. Like, it's too frozen to drink. This is like the third strawberry milkshake I've had on this show. And it's... I, I'm waiting for it to thaw. Do you want me to take it off your hands? No. Okay. Hey, That's hey. That's what I'm drinking. Episode 10. Welcome. We did it. Again, are you drinking for any reason? Uh, Nothing in life has happened in the last week that you want to talk about? Um, at work, they gave me my own investigation at my, like, private investigation. What company. do you do? I do. I literally work at a private... I'm a temp, so it's like, oh, Whoa. it sounds boring as fuck and horrible, but I got my own... They, like, gave me my own investigation, and I can't, like, say what it was. What does that mean? Like, you're a private investigator? Literally. Like, I go through people's, like, Wait, email. I want that job? It's so cool. And I... Well, I don't want to quit my permanent job to become a temp. I'm no, saying, you don't. Like, you don't. <laughs> and it's, like, fine. But it, it was one of those things where I was like, okay, I'll do this for, like, a month. But I'm there, and I'm like, well, it's actually really fun and awesome. And I get to go through people's social media and emails and, like, write down everything suspicious about them and get paid for it. So it's great. Um, so they gave me my own investigation... And I kind of, like, there was one thing that I really fucked up, and I accidentally sent the investigators to the insurance adjuster's house instead of the actual <laughs> subject's house. Oh, shit. <laughs> so, yay for me. Yay! But they didn't fire me, so. Oh, God. Hello, I'm here. That sounds like a fun job. I have a friend back home who's dating a, an actual PI. Cool. And I was like, oh, I would love a job like that. That sounds so much cool, fun. Cool, right? Yeah. It That's sounds so do. much fun. I literally assign all these people. Uh, assignments to like the PIs they hire and then I like get to send them on their missions and then they give me my own assignment and I was like oh I would love that it's job so cool it's like desk work Olivia Benson yeah yeah exactly it's like I don't have to do anything really but I get to like snoop in everybody's life mm, that it's, sounds so cool it's really cool that sounds so cool and I get made paid more than I ever did in tv so yay <laughs> <laughs> so there's that so are you out of the film industry then no okay hell no I just need some like money for it's like an eight to five job, and then I do this, and then the comedy show, and then uh, right. Yeah, got a busy life. Do the LA lifestyle, you know. Cool. Why do you drink this week? <sighs> I drink because I'm learning my new job, which isn't bad. I do like my new job. Oh, good. I just uh, it's a change. Like the environment is very different. Mm-hmm. I'm used to like laughing and joking around all the time, and now I have to be like quiet and Ooh, professional, attentive, and. What do you do exactly? Uh, so I am a department coordinator oh. for uh, entertainment marketing and product placement. That sounds really cool. Yeah. So we have clients that we work with that we try to get their product on TV. And uh, another part of the job that I have is I show scan, which is pretty cool. So I have to watch the shows after they come out and try to find the products and then write down like time codes and do sheets and everything of how long it actually aired so we can then give those to our clients and be like oh look we got your product on the air for this long that's so cool so last week i watched a lot of shows i spent like a whole day on thursday where i just watched tv all day just trying to find products but it's actually harder than i thought because i don't just get to like mindlessly watch tv i'm not even really paying attention to the characters i'm like just staring at the background the whole time scanning (laughs) yeah and uh it's weird because shows i used to make props for i never actually watched those shows because after i made the props i was like i don't really care about the show because it's ruined (laughs) (laughs) but now i'm watching the shows that i 
happen to also make props for. So now I'm watching the shows and I'm seeing my props and I'm like, oh yeah, I'd made that. Oh yeah, I made that. Oh, I cut that. And out. so I'm finding the wrong products a lot of the time because I'm scanning and I'll see something I made and then I get like my attention goes towards that instead of Aww. the products I'm actually supposed to be paying attention to. Still cool though. Yeah. I mean, I work in the same company, so I still hang out with all the same people. That's good. Well, I have facts. Tell me. Would you like a milkshake one or a wine one? I want to hear a milkshake one. Okay. Um, okay. Well, did you know that it would take 3.2 million milkshakes to fill an Olympic-sized pool? <laughs> AKA one serving for me. No, I didn't know that. That is crazy. That's some information for you. I will store that in my brain. Uh, are you ready for a wine one? I am. Uh, there is a drink called seagull wine. Like, 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 like a seagull. bird? Yeah. I hate seagulls. Well, it's made purely by stuffing a whole seagull into a bottle of water and leaving it there in the sun to ferment. That's not real. I'm not kidding. Let's Google it. That is not real. I mean, real. I, didn't just, I didn't just say that out of I'm my brain. I'm pretty sure you made that up. No, seagull wine. If I have to look at a picture and see a fucking bird yeah, in a bottle really to prove this to you. Yeah, you're really freaking me out. Where is it? That is a nightmare. I better not. Ooh, it's real. No, it's not. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. I'm going to vomit. <laughs> Why would you tell me that? I don't like birds. Ah, uh, it's real. It just looks like one of those science projects where people put snakes in jars. But why would you drink that? I don't. If for I don't know. Also because like alive birds have a bunch of diseases. Why would you drink a raw one? <gasps> now are you looking at it too? Uh, uh, Gross. Anyway, there's your f- fun fact. There's a fact. Look, I don't make the facts. I just read them. Oh my god, apparently and it's an, it's an invention of Inuits in desperate need of a drink. Desperate indeed. Jesus. Simply stuff a dead seagull in bits or whole into a bottle of water and leave it I just it want in the, the chunks that have eyes. Yuck! I'm trying to tell you something fun and... I'm sorry, this is not fun. It's terrifying to me. Okay. Do you want a different one? No, that's fine. I'll take it. No, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a different one. Did you know that the oldest person lived to be 122 and it gives credit towards drinking a glass of port every week? I did. Every day? I did. Only because my mother and I have shared that article with each other probably a hundred times because we're like, let's reinforce. <laughs> <laughs> let's enable each other. Let's enable ourselves and each other. Anyway, that's all I got. That's actually, I love that. How old were they? hundred and what? 122. Holy crap. And 22 is my lucky number. So I'm going to call that a win for both of us. Thank you. Um, that's all, that's all the intro shit I've got for you. That's all I had too. So let's get into it. Wow. Things are going so much more effortlessly than they did last week. Yeah. Oh, I did want to add, I didn't save the name and I tried to find it, but someone on Twitter (laughs) wrote, because we were talking about what our trademarks were and you said, let's crack into it. And I was like, I wonder what mine is. And someone tweeted at us that. Yours was let's crack into it, and mine was just gasping, like, <laughs> the whole episode. I've heard from a lot of people that their favorite part of the show is listening to your reactions <laughs> to the shit I say. I literally just go, <gasps> <gasps> and people have said that it's my trademark, and it's so I have, embarrassing. I have one friend uh, back at home who, their favorite thing to do, which I'll start sending you, it's they so- will just record themselves reacting to your reactions. No, it's so embarrassing. I'm so embarrassed. And uh, Kirk, the guy who did our our logo. logo. He listens to us religiously. Every single time he listens to something, he'll, he won't tell me he's listening to the episode. He'll just shout the title at me. So I, so like I'm in the know that he's in the know. Kirk is my favorite person. Um, I think he just listened to Robert the doll yesterday and found me in my new department. And he was like, Robert the doll. And he just shouted it. And I was like, yeah, that's what we talked about. That's terrifying. <laughs> Don't shout that. <laughs> um, but he also has said that his favorite part is just listening to how you react to the well, shit I say. I'm, that's so embarrassing. No, I you're to, just enthusiastic no, and No, I need passionate. to stop with that. So I'm going to be really cautious of my... Don't. It's like some of the people's favorite. Give the people what they want. It's not for me. They like you. Oh, please. I feel like you're just the popular one, but it's fine. I'll it's because it. I'm single. I deserve attention. I'll get over it. Okay. Are you ready? Tell me a story. Let's crack into it. <gasps> And that's the title of our spinoff series. No. How fun. <laughs> Let's crack into it, Gasp. I think you'll like this. I get so excited when you tell me what we're talking about. Well, it's because I always like, I always mm-hmm. move around in my chair like, you, like I'm about to. You like settle in. <laughs> I know. I like, I get cozy because I'm, I'm ready to blow your mind. Okay. 
I think you'll like this. I'm not sure. People that listen to us will have varying opinions. Really? What does that mean? Well, after Robert the Doll, I got a lot of oomph (laughs) from the uh, Twitter community because uh, a lot of people didn't like that I talked about Robert the Doll. Why? Not in like a, that they were mad. Oh, they were freaked out? Yeah, like they were just like, oh, okay. fuck you. Like, for terrifying me. Okay, I was about to get real mad. No, you don't have to defend me. Thank, Thank you, you. You're Mom. Welcome. So, uh, I'm going to piss off the same people. Oh, <gasps> do I have another doll? Ew, these are the creepiest. I am. Tell me. Can you guess who? It's probably the one that you wrote on the board called Annabelle, though, mm-hmm. but I don't know what that is. I just remember... You don't know what Annabelle is? I don't. Whoa, my internet just decided to, like, whip itself open. Yes, I'm talking about Annabelle. Because when we wrote it on the whiteboard, my brother came in when I wasn't looking and took an expo marker and wrote... It said Annabelle the doll, and he wrote, Annabelle the dolly partner impersonator. <laughs> <laughs> so it said Annabelle the dolly I love Parton anything dolly partner related. Perfect. So I don't know what we're talking about. She's got ivory skin and... <laughs> Eyes of green. <laughs> so I'm all <coughs> okay. I'm all sorts of confused. So tell me. Well, I would love to tell you, except my computer just decided to freak the fuck out. <gasps> Do you think it's Annabelle the Dolly Parton impersonator? I hope not. Okay, we're back. Let me just settle in. Get my get my leg up. What's happening? Here? <laughs> I'm just rotating, <laughs> rotating things. Like hoisting your <laughs> undercarriage. Look, my legs, I'm like six feet tall, so my legs are pretty heavy. Okay, so I have to lift them sometimes with my hands. I can't move them on my, <laughs> oh my own. God. Look, my legs <laughs> are like horse tarantula legs. You know what the <laughs> fuck? Big right. long. If you donate limber. to our Patreon, we can get an, a lazy boy <laughs> <laughs> armchair recliner. Uh, for her for her tarantula no, like, legs <laughs> you know what i mean like they just like they move on their own i don't know what you they're mean they're very independent it's fine. of I, themselves i support you anyway okay anyone else who has four foot long legs understands what i'm talking about nobody has that okay go on <laughs> <laughs> okay annabelle so in the 1970s a nurse a nursing student not a nurse yet soon to be a nursing- Don't give her undue credit. <laughs> <laughs> a nursing student named Donna uh, received a Raggedy Ann doll from her mother, which her mom bought at like some like tchotchke kind of store. Nope. I don't like it. I never liked Raggedy Ann nope, dolls. me neither. Creep me the fuck out. Well, this one gives you good reason to be freaked out. It was out. a Raggedy... This makes <laughs> it so much worse. I have pictures if you want them later. Nope. Um, so... Donna was a nursing student. She got a Raggedy Ann doll as a gift from her mom. Thanks, mom. <laughs> what, and a weird, what a weird gift. <laughs> if my mom gave me a Raggedy Ann doll, I would throw it in a fire. Be like, nope. Okay. So um, she took the doll back to her place with uh, where she shared it with, I think the roommate's name was Angie. Uh-huh. And um, put the doll in her bed. Didn't really think about it. Um, and the woman started noticing that the doll was moving on its own. Um and like not only changing position but eventually was like ending up on different parts of the f- of the room and then ultimately started like being in different rooms like no. they would go into the bedroom and see it and then leave and then go back in the bedroom and it wouldn't even be in the room it Mm-mm. would be somewhere else and then it would always be like sitting either on the floor or in a chair where it couldn't have gotten by itself in theory. Ew. Or sometimes it would like almost solidify and be in a standing position no, and like ew. would just be leaning on a chair, staring at them. We're not even, this is just the intro. Calm and down. Something like you're just freaking me the fuck out lately. I think what's going to be really interesting is after we record this and we just hang out and talk about ghosts. No, I'm like already scared. No, come on, please. That's my favorite part of coming over on Saturdays. (laughs) Okay, but can we do it though? Yeah. Okay. Yes. But my favorite part of being your friend is talking about ghosts with you. (laughs) Oh, mine too. Thanks. Okay. Um, all right. Where was I? Okay. So it was just moving everywhere. Uh, I have written at times Donna and the roommate would find the doll sitting cross-legged on the couch other times it would be found, like, it was found upright standing on its feet, which no. I'm not fucking for because the whole point of Raggedy Ann is that she's raggedy and uh-huh. is, does not have joints. No. Or a skeletal system. <laughs> um, no. That's the whole point. The whole point is no skeleton. <laughs> uh, okay, so not, okay, this is where it, it gets even neater. 
sounds really neat. Are you ready, Christy? <laughs> no. Okay, so we do it. We should also have video footage of you reacting no. because if people think the sounds are great, watching your face is just a treasure. I just lose <laughs> her my... whole body is sh- she's shaking out the fear. I okay, really lose my goddamn mind. Her eyes are already watering, and I'm only in the first paragraph of a whole page. God damn it. Okay, the doll did not only move. Do you want to guess what else it did? Not talk. Oh. Uh, move, talk, and no. What? What? Write? Yeah. No. What? It could write. That is even creepier. So a uh, couple times, uh, Donna and the roommate uh, began to find penciled messages that looked <gasps> like it was written by a child. Where? All over the house. Like on the walls? No, like on paper. Oh, what the fuck? There would just be random paper and pencils. And they also wouldn't remember having bought that paper oh, or bought the pencils. Ew. So they're like, the material isn't even supposed to be here. Ew. And they would find little notes on the floor next to the doll. Holy shit. Would you like me to tell you what the note said? <laughs> sure. Help us. Are you kidding? No, tell the truth. Uh, what the fuck? And the handwriting looked like it belonged to a small child. <gasps> That's okay. We're one paragraph down. You're doing so good. I'm so brave. You are the bravest person in this room besides me. Okay, so... Good for me. <laughs> you almost get one whole medal. I've come so far. So it got worse. Can you believe it? No. I certainly can. No. So one night, uh, Donna is coming home, sees the doll, once again not sitting where she left it. And this time... All over the hands of it are blood. And what? the blood seemed, or it was a red liquid, but they assume blood. And it seemed to be coming from the actual doll. Like it was seeping out of it. So like if you pressed on it, it would come out, oh, like more would come out of the fabric. The fuck? <clears throat> that was the sign for Donna that she was like, mm, we should get like a medium or do something to figure out what the fuck is going on with this yeah. doll because it's moving on its own. My first thought would have been, hmm, tear it into different pieces and throw them in different parts of the earth, but whatever. Literally I, burn it and throw it in a river. I guess we're just going to call a medium. Okay, Donna. <clears throat> so the medium conducted a seance. Through the seance, she found out that uh, she was talking to a spirit named Annabelle Higgins, who was a seven-year-old girl. And I guess she died on the property where the apartments are now built. And Annabelle said that uh, she liked the woman in the apartment living there and she felt comfortable and safe with them and wanted to stay with them and for them to not throw her away. That, and she was like, I guess living through the doll. So anytime they saw her moving around, it was just her way of saying hi. And she had never felt safe until they moved in. So she just wanted to like be loved on. So the doll that the mom had bought didn't have the spirit in it until it was moved to that apartment. I guess so. Yeah. Mm. Um, and so, uh, Donna ended up saying, uh, yeah, you know, you can stay in the doll or whatever. Like, well, you know, if you feel safe with us, sure. So that's the beginning of the end right there. Great. Uh, so a mutual friend named Lou, who I like to consider, uh, the first person who dies in a horror movie. <laughs> oh God. Cause he's usually the smartest one. He's like, let's get the fuck out. And no one listens to him. He doesn't die, but I mean, he's like that kind of guy. Uh, he's like, uh-uh, I don't fuck with this shit. I already smell crazy. Poor Lou. So Lou takes one look at this doll and is like, I don't fucking like it. And uh, Donna explains like, oh, no, it's like a little girl inside. <laughs> it's and, our friend. And Lou was probably like, this girl is tripping. Yes. All right. So one night, um, after, after several times of being at that house, and he's like, I don't like that doll. Like when I'm around, like just put it somewhere else. Um, he... Spent the night one night on the couch and then woke up and realized he was paralyzed. Huh. Um, he looked down at his feet, trying to move them, and saw Annabelle sitting there. Uh-uh. Uh, the doll began to slowly climb up his leg. Emily. <laughs> moved on top of his chest and then began to strangle him. And because he was paralyzed, he couldn't get away, um. so he was gasping for breath. And at the point of basically being asphyxiated, he blacked out. And woke up to, in theory, it being a dream, but he said it felt so real that when he woke up and jolted up, it was like his legs hadn't been moving in a long time. What the fuck? Like when he, I guess I read on one of the sites that his account of it was when he tried to get, when he, when he woke up from the dream, he rolled off the couch and tried to move his legs and they were almost like joint locked because like they hadn't been moved in so long. Oh my God. The next terrifying thing that happened 
Um, oh, I it, so I guess they were going to, they were packing for a road trip mm-hmm. and Lou was there again, which if I were Lou, I'd be like yeah. 50 miles out of that house Get all the, the time. out of there, Lou. And um, they were planning a road trip and they were in one room and in a, a room off from them, they heard like a man walking around or like a, like heavy footsteps walking around mm-hmm. and no one else was in the apartment. So they ended up, um, Lou like crept into the room to see like what was going on in there. And the only thing that was in the room was the doll sitting in the uh, corner uh. from there. Like he walked over to the doll to see like if there was anything else near her, because of course the doll wasn't there last time he was in the room. Right. So he's starting to walk towards it to kind of check on it and feels a burning on his neck that uh, he gets the sensation that someone is evil and staring at him like that dark kind of presence Mm -hmm, behind mm -hmm. him. So he turns around to look at it and doesn't see anything, but all of a sudden basically feels like he gets slapped on the back and giant animal claws (gasps) get cut through his back. So there was no one there. Uh, He... Oh, he found himself uh, doubled over, cut and bleeding, and on his chest there were seven distinct claw marks. Oh my god. Three vertical, four horizontal, and they all apparently felt white hot like like brand new burns. Oh my god. So like a grid pattern of claws scratched into his chest. Um, again, if that's happened to me once, it's happened a million fucking times. Get out of that house. Get out. Like... That's not, like, p- getting paralyzed and strangled by a doll wasn't enough, but yeah. let's also get fucking clawed <laughs> also, by a doll. also, I'm going to walk into a room with it by myself. So, uh, eventually, Donna contacts a priest, because now she's listening to Lou. Thanks, Donna, for that. Um, and the priest immediately contacts the Warrens. Because I-, I guess the Amityville thing had just happened, and so everyone knew their name at this oh. point. So the priest was like, okay, we'll get them in here. Yeah. Um, so they went on an investigation. Um, they... Uh, Lorraine, who's the clairvoyant, ended up talking to whatever was in the house, or at least making contact to some level, mm-hmm. and told Donna, uh, hey, dumbass, uh, that wasn't a little girl talking to you. That was a <gasps> like horrible fucking demon that basically pretended that it was a girl to play off of your emotional oh vulnerabilities. God. And when it asked if it could stay and you gave it permission. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. Are you fucking kidding? No, no, I'm not kidding. That happens? Yes. What the fuck? So it said basically it was walking around and was never actually a spirit in the doll. No, no, Abby. <laughs> it was actually it was actually a demon that was not like was literally never inside the doll at all. It was just a demon throwing it around as an item for people to acknowledge that something was there. So Holy it was God. never a little spirit in a doll. It was literally a demon grabbing the doll and moving it around so that it could, so that people could see something and acknowledge that there was an energy. And so then he lied and said, "Oh, I'm trapped in this doll. Can I can I stay here because I feel comfort and love from you?" And they basically welcomed him in. And so now that they welcomed him in, he wasn't actually trying to get attached to the doll. He was trying to then attach onto a human body. So. After the Warrens did this investigation, they said, had you stayed in this house with this thing for another two to three weeks, it would have eventually attached to one of you, of you and tried to possess you. Absolutely not. It was basically it was looking for a human host and all it needed was to be welcomed into the house. Nope. And they vulnerably did so. And it was borderline about to possess one of them. No, that's fucked up. Um, so it, it got a lot worse. Um. In, like in the time that the Warrens were there because they kept coming in to check on it and they tried to do exorcisms and it wasn't working. Um, the doll started moving around by teleportation. Um, uh, oh, oh, um, the Warrens, I forgot to put this in. Uh, I read on one of them that the Warrens also said by bringing in a uh, medium, they were allowing the demonic spirit access to finally communicate with them one-on-one. Instead of just dragging around a doll, it was able to explicitly talk to them, which I guess made them closer, like Mm -hmm. made them like energy. I don't know. Like they were now closer to it in some way and it made them even more vulnerable. Um, so, uh, yeah. So they thought that the next step was going to be, uh, infestation, which is like the second phase in demonic possession. Oh, um, 
And so they said, listen, you got to get this doll out of your house. We will gladly take it from you. Um, and cause they tried blessing the apartment and cleansing it. And they were like, we'll just take the doll with us. Um, and I guess the Warren specifically chose to, uh, take back roads because they knew that like something fucked up would happen. Like if they're putting a demonic doll in their car, <gasps> what the fuck? I don't know. Cause I guess the demon was currently attached to the doll. It was still more attached to the doll than anything else because mm-hmm. it hadn't leached onto a human yet. So if they took the doll, doll out, they're taking the demon out. Um, they put the doll in a bag and sure enough, uh, they were driving home and the, every time they turned a corner, the engine would cut out. Um, the car would swerve and stall the power steering and the brakes failed. And eventually Ed Warren put holy water in the bag with the doll. And then they were able to drive home without any problem. My God. Uh, Ed left the doll at his desk for a while, like, cause they have in their house, it's basically a museum of all these haunted artifacts, oh. which is something I would love to visit one That's day, so but cool. also <laughs> I don't want to go near it. Um, but so one of the things that they have, if you've ever watched any of the movies involving the Warrens, they always shoot it. Like they have a scene where they're always in their, in their basement or mm-hmm. their and it's, it's basically a makeshift museum of all the stuff that they've collected. Wow. And you can always see Annabelle in the back. That's one of their big things that they have. So before they ever had a place in that area for Annabelle, they just kept it in their house. And because uh, they're used to having haunted shit in their house since they're the fucking Warrens. Yeah. <laughs> so they put the they would leave the doll on the desk and then eventually started coming in at night and seeing the doll levitating on the desk. Uh-uh. uh-uh. Um. A couple times that happened, and then eventually it slowed down, but it actually got worse after the little intermission, and she started appearing in different rooms, Um, and then when a Catholic priest apparently came to try and throw holy water at it, like, steam came off of the doll. Like, it burnt it away. Oh, my God. So, sensing that the doll was, you know, getting back into its, like, the heat of the game... um, I guess the priest got scared and out of fear said something like, you're just a doll or you can't hurt anyone. Like was like challenging it basically. And on the way home, the priest got in a huge car accident and was basically inches away from dying. Oh God. Uh, so they ended up creating a locked case. I think they just surrounded it with holy water and like all these like religious relics just to keep it closed. And to date she has never, she hasn't left the box. But they have a sign on there. I, I like the way that it was worded. I've I've seen this picture a million times before I ever researched this because I've always wanted to learn more about Annabelle. But the sign says like "positively do not open." Like oh god, and it's like written in old timey handwriting because of how long ago it was. But um, and I knew about Annabelle and the Warrens before I even uh was like just when I would watch the movies, I would see Annabelle in the back during like that scene. And I was yeah. Like, oh. But anyway, so. Um, she's also thought to be the death of a, um, a young man who went to the museum with his girlfriend one time because the guy was like challenging the doll and banging on the glass and saying like, come on, put scratches on me, put scratches on me. Why would you do that? First of all, because he's a fucking douche. That's why. But so anyway, on the way home, he got in a motorcycle accident and died. Um, and his girlfriend survived the accident, but was in the hospital for like over a year or something. Holy shit. Um, but so I guess people can... I don't know if people actually can go visit the museum because it is in their house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But people, I guess they'll welcome people in and you can go down and see stuff. If you really, I can't imagine, like, if you're not a skeptic at all, then everything in in that part of their house is, like, the most haunted shit and, like, the most cursed things. Yeah. All in one concentrated room. So I can't imagine they really want people down there touching things. No, probably not. But, um... I would love to go down there one day. That sounds really cool. And they, uh, since Annabelle, since her, I guess, discovery and people finding out about her, she has, uh, ca- she has either been involved in or starred in two different movie series. One's The Conjuring and Conjuring 2. Oh. And Annabelle and Annabelle 2, which is going to release soon. I actually worked on Annabelle 2. Anyway, that's, that's basically it the all any other stories i saw were just different ways that people have challenged it all since it's been in the glass and they just all get hurt in the same horrible ways oh my god so basically if you have a death wish yeah i don't know why you would fuck with it yeah we should get um that guy from your last story 
the me, me, oh michael malloy <laughs> michael malloy get him to go tap on the glass and see what happens <laughs> he'd probably survive anyway um and then i had a picture to show you what it actually looks like i don't want to see it um I, I don't care i'm gonna have nightmares i it's fine here this is the movie version on the left and the real version on the right it's just a raggedy end doll i mean it doesn't oh, that is so creepy looking yeah Somehow. Also, I think it's weird that on the case that they have padlocked is a tarot card of the devil. Oh, I think that's pretty fucked up. Like on the real one. Like on the real one. Oh, what the fuck? Anyway, that's Annabelle. Annabelle is... Fucking scary. Yeah. I don't want to talk bad about her because I don't want her to come after me, but... Not into it. Well, it's not as lengthy of a story as Robert the Doll, but... At At least, you know what, they... Something was happening, something fishy was going on, and then they got an immediate contact from the Warrens, who are the best people in the business, and right. then they fixed it. Right, right, right. All right, Em, are you ready for my story? No. <laughs> Fine, maybe I'll keep it to myself. All right, what is it? Okay. I'll humor you. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. My story is about H.H. H. Holmes. Do you know who that is? Yeah, I do. He was America's first murderer. He was America's first serial killer. Oh, serial killer shit. But he's the one who created the... He, like, bought out a hotel or something and turned it into his own, like, torture chamber. Okay, well, don't give away my whole story. Oh, that's all I know. I tried watching um, a documentary on him on Netflix, and it was not good. Oh, good. So sorry to the people who wanted to watch that. Don't watch that. Did, you didn't watch it, did you? Mm-mm. I didn't. I could not get through it. But that doesn't mean he's not interesting. I like ended up uh, finding out about him through like, like murder tweets and murder Facebook pages and stuff like that. That sounds like I like am part of like a murder group. murder tweets. <laughs> like like okay, like I follow people that like tell like serial killer facts and stuff like that. Uh huh. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But I've never actually heard the whole story of it's- him. Fucking crazy. All right, lay it on me. Okay, so H.H. H. Holmes was born in 1861 under the name Herman Mudgett. Neat. What a... No wonder he turned... That's he changed every, his name. I, yeah, I was like, that's everyone's first... Like, I would be a serial killer, too. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, his father was a violent alcoholic. Um, mm. He was really good in school, but he got bullied a lot. Um, and in an attempt to scare him, the bullies in his school, he, they found out that he was scared of the doctor. So uh-huh. they broke into the doctor's office with him. Aww. dragged him in there and made him stand face to face with a human skeleton and then they made the skeleton like they put the hands of the skeleton on his face wait they put a skeleton on his face they brought him in and like put him face to face with a human skeleton in the doctor's office and mm-hmm. then put the skeleton's hands on his face and then he said that's where his fascination with death began no that's fucked up yeah so they done fucked up by turning him into a serial killer right yeah um so he said uh, later that he found that experience fascinating um, and that it cured him of all his fears. All of his fears? Yeah, because he was scared of, like, the doctor and death. Oh, and well, he was like, since a skeleton has touched my face, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> what else could go wrong? The skeleton, he was like, this is my new passion in life. Great. Uh, at age 16, he graduated high school and moved to New Hampshire. He married a woman named Clara Lovering, had a son with her, then became a CPA and the city manager of Orlando, Florida, hmm. just randomly. At age 21, he enrolled at the Uni- University of Michigan's med school. He graduated a few years later with his medical degree. While he was at the University of Michigan, he stole cadavers from the laboratory, disfigured the bodies, claimed the victims were killed accidentally and would collect uh, the insurance money from policies on each of the people who had died. So he like started this scam of like having these, finding these dead bodies and being like, Oh, this was my cousin. Right. I'm going to take his insurance money. Um, so his marriage to Clara quickly fell apart. Not surprising. Uh, he abandoned his wife and son and spent the next couple years moving around the country to various cities, doing random jobs um, and continuing scams, he would like take out, he would get credit cards and buy a bunch of shit on credit and then sell it and then leave town so they would never be able to find him. So back in the okay, you know, cool, nobody could try. I do him that too. Back in the day, yeah, yeah, I'm <laughs> sure that goes really well for you. Yeah, obviously we're uh, you're wealthy beyond your wildest dreams, beyond compare, I would say. <laughs> 
Um, he moved to Moore's Fork, New York, and a rumor spread that he had been seen with a little boy who disappeared. Um, he claimed the boy went back to his home in Massachusetts. Uh, before an investigation could take place, he left town and decided to change his name. Um, he went to Pennsylvania and... Wait, where was he originally? Uh, he was born... I don't fucking know. Like, where did skeleton touch his face? I don't know. Let me look it up. (laughs) (laughs) What? All right. He was born in New Hampshire. Okay. So he worked at this drugstore in Philadelphia, but while he was working there, a boy died from taking medicine that he had bought from the store. Uh, Holmes denied any involvement with the child's death and immediately left the city. He moved to Chicago and changed his name to Henry Howard Holmes. H.H. Holmes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. oh, calm down. All right, chill. Everybody, chill. Okay, let's all play cool. Play cool. Play cool. Uh, so he wanted to avoid uh, any of his scams catching up to him, basically. Gotcha. While he was still married to Clara in 1887, he decided to marry Murda Belknap and just decided to like adopt a second wife. Uh, they li- adopt her. Yeah, just take her under his wing. You right. Know. They lived outside Chicago and had a daughter. Uh, five years later, he married Georgia- Georgiana Yoke in Denver. So that's his third wife. So he basically had. So he had name all of them again because they all have even weirder names yeah, than the yeah, one before yeah, yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the first one was named Clara, then Murda, mm-hmm. then Georgiana. Okay. He liked. This is America. Mm-hmm. Okay. He liked blonde women with blue eyes. To the Aryan race. Mm-hmm. Typical. Yeah. Typical serial killer. Typical sociopath. Mm-hmm. So here's where it gets to the good part. Uh, he moved to Chicago. Um, well, he was living in Chicago with his third wife. So he came across Elizabeth S. Holton's drugstore and got a job there. And she was very impressed with his uh, work. And her husband was dying. So when he died, he uh, when her husband died, H.H. Uh, H. Holmes decided to offer to buy the drugstore from her and she agreed and he said that he would pay her $2,700 okay it was $100 then today's dollars it's $2,700 a month to pay her back uh and by the way he made money was by selling water that he claimed would cure the sick um did he put in it or was it just water it was literally water and he was like oh it'll heal you oh so he just was a tap water salesman Right? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, literally. Like a tap water scammer. Yeah. Like a con artist. Yep. Okay. A tap I just wanted to make sure I got it. Tap water scammer. Tap mm-hmm. water scammer. Yep. So he sold basically water and said it would heal the sick, which obviously did not. Uh, so he stopped paying his payments to Elizabeth. Surprise, surprise. And uh, soon after that, she disappeared. Hmm. When people asked where she was, he told them she moved to California to be with her relatives. Then, Holmes decided to purchase an empty lot across the street and okay. build a three-story block, three-story block-long hotel building. How long did that, how much did that cost back then, though? A lot of money. I mean, was he rich, though? Yeah, because he literally scammed everybody for Right, right, right. Years. Okay. He, he just would, like, take dead people and get money off of, like, he would just get thousands and thousands of dollars off corpses. Um, and then like murder people like her and get all their money. And then he got this whole drugstore because she disappeared. Oh, okay, cool. Um, so he decided to buy an empty lot and he also came from money too. So it wasn't even like, you know, so he purchased this empty lot across from the drugstore, built a three story block long hotel. People called it the castle because it was so massive. Um, but if it was that big, wouldn't people want to go walk around in it or like visit it? Or? Yeah, a lot of people visited because. And they it, just didn't see all the dead bodies? No, it was a. <laughs> Shush, there's no dead bodies yet. Okay. Mm. So That's a good point. He, <laughs> so he <laughs> created this hotel and people called it the castle because it was so massive. Um, they called it the World's Fair Hotel because the World's Fair was coming to Chicago that year. And so he was going to uh, rent the rooms out to people visiting for the fair. Mm-hmm. Um, and they would stay there during that time. And I actually, funny enough, a couple weeks ago, Hillbilly Horror Stories did this same episode on H.H. H. Holmes, and they 
uh, I learned from them that this was the World's Fair where they actually introduced electricity. Oh, and to the fair, so they murderers like, and serial killers. Yeah, so they lit up the the fair, and many people died. Okay, <laughs> at different times. Yes, not at the same. <laughs> These were this was not the same historical. They event. were not electrocuted. Okay, uh, so the ground floor of the castle had uh, Holmes' own drugstore. He moved his drugstore into the castle, uh, a jeweler's office. Uh, the upstairs contained his own personal ob- office and a labyrinth of rooms. It had doorways that led to, like, frick walls, had weirdly angled hallways, stairs leading to nowhere, uh, doors that could only be opened from the outside, and other strange constructions. And it reminds me of the, um, whatchamacallit? Oh, the Winchester Mystery Winchester House. Winchester House. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Episode one. Episode one. God. So far away. Really, though. So, yeah, so it just, and he, the way he had people build it was that he would keep firing people while they were building it so that nobody really knew, like, the full uh, extent of the construction. That's smart. Mm-hmm. Um, so nobody knew, like, like, let's say he ever got found out, they wouldn't really, no one would really know where anything was. Right. So he just kind of had them build, like, pieces and then would fire them. Uh, so during the... During the construction, Holmes met and became close friends with this uh, criminal. He was a carpenter, but he was also a criminal named uh, Benjamin Pitezel. How was he a criminal? Uh, he was just like a petty criminal from the oh. past. And so uh, Holmes kind of bec- like used him as his right-hand man, and Pitezel would like help him with all these scams and things like that. Mm-hmm. But remember his name. Because he comes back to the story. Patizzle. Yeah. We don't have to remember For it. shizzle my patizzle. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? Oh, no. What is it? It's, I mean, yeah. Oh. Technically, you're right. But you're so wrong also. <laughs> okay. <laughs> patizzle my nizzle. <laughs> is it called patizzle? Uh, patizzle? Oh. Patazzle like bedazzle? Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm never going to win this conversation. All right. Let me know. All right. Just keep him in mind. Basically, H.H. Holmes Hotel became a murder and torture hotel. Right. So what he did was he required his employees to take out life insurance policies as part of their contract. But, of course, he was the beneficiary. Ah, so, like, that's fine. He would pay their premiums, but he was also the beneficiary if anything happened to them. Casual. Uh, some of the ways that he uh, killed people, he had soundproof bedrooms that were fitted with gas lines. Mm-hmm. So he could asphyxiate his guests whenever he wanted. He had a room on the second floor called the secret hanging chamber. Uh, he had a vault in his office. It was a giant soundproof vault where he would lock people and then suffocate them to death. And then, he would suffocate them or he like, yes, like he would like go in would and suff- suffocate them? No, like he didn't strangle them. They would, he would like lock them in this vault and they would suffocate. Oh, that's so much worse. Yeah, it's bad. And they found like scratch marks and stuff on the... Yeah. One of the things I hate most is the idea of getting buried alive. Totally. That's like my biggest like, mm. death fear besides the one about being in a surgery. and ooh, Yeah. Ooh. yeah. Um, then he had a secret room that was sealed by solid brick that could only be entered by a trap door in the ceiling. And they would lock people in there. He would lock people in there for days to die of hunger and thirst just to see how long they survived. Like as an experiment? Yeah. Just to like leave them in there until they died. It's so fucked up. He even had an alarm system set, so if people left their rooms in the hotel or walked down the hallway, it would, like, trigger, like, a, like a, I don't know if it was a bell or something, but he would, like, know when people were moving around the hotel because he didn't want anyone to be, like, wandering through oh, weird. the hotel. Um, it, as far as the bodies, he would take their bodies and either put them down a metal chute or there was, like, a dumbwaiter that led to the basement. In the basement, he would dissect them, strip them of their flesh... And then uh, craft them into skeletons that he would sell to, like, medical schools. So he was, like, making money off these dead bodies by, like, selling their skeletons. And remember, he'd gone to med school, too, so he, like, knew about, like... Oh, so he, like, he knew the anatomy and all that. Uh Uh-huh. And he even had a guy that would come, and he'd be like, this man died in his hotel room. Like, please help me articulate the skeleton. And would, like, have this guy come and, like, pay him 50 bucks to... That's fucked up. He had a mistress named Julia Smythe, who was the wife of the jeweler that worked downstairs. And when, oh. I know. And when uh, her husband found out that she was having an affair with him and got pregnant, he, like, peaced out um, and left her and her daughter Pearl behind. 
uh, she decided to stay with Holmes with her daughter. When she told Holmes that she was pregnant with this child, he said he would marry her, but she would have to have an abortion. But he said he could do it for her. Oh, oh my I word. Oh, it's so fucked. So he, on Christmas Eve, he brought her to his... On ob- Christmas Eve? Christmas Eve. He was like, this seems like a good time. He brought her to his abortion room. He oh. had a room called the abortion well, room? Well, he said, this is where I perform abortions. So yeah, basically. Oh. He, I uh, perform exorcisms, baptisms, and abortions. <laughs> if you want to get married, I'm also ordained. <laughs> he overdosed her with chloroform, then killed her daughter, Pearl. Like, just went back and murdered her daughter. Oh, so just, like, knocked her out and then murdered killed, her, the, mur- killed murdered the daughter? Murdered her with chloroform and then went and killed the daughter. Oh, she, murdered her with chloroform. uh uh-huh, overdosed her and, like, oh, she was shit. a goner. Yeah, and then killed Pearl. Um, and then when someone in the building was like, where are they? He said they went to Iowa for a family wedding. Like, that's not even... Well, no one's ever going to look in Iowa. I'll but aren't they going to come back if they're, like, leave for a wedding? I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. That's true. So, uh, so after that, he met this railroad heiress. So, how, wait, how many people has he been married to or dated at this so point? So, at this point, Four? He, this, he's on his third wife. This is his... Uh, Second mistress? Second mistress. Good. But, like, who knows, you know, who else is in there. And there's more. Like, I'm... There's one more here. God. Soon after, he met a railroad heiress named Minnie Williams. Hmm. In Boston. He decided to call himself Henry Gordon, and they started dating. Uh, He even sent love letters to her because they lived long distance for a while, but she moved to Chicago in 1893, and he offered her a job at the hotel as his personal stenographer. Hmm. He, Everyone needs a stenographer. Yeah, I, I need one of those. <laughs> we need one for the podcast. That'd be great. What's a stenographer? They write things down. Oh, yeah, you we know. do need one of those. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what did you think it was? <laughs> I wasn't sure. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. I it's really, like a, I really it's don't like know. like a, a court stenographer. Like, they, t- they write everything down that everyone's saying. Oh. We don't need anyone to write our conversations down though no we don't need a paper trail nobody (laughs) nobody needs that nobody needs proof of the shit we say Uh, it's not like we record it on a weekly basis (laughs) um he also convinced her to transfer the d uh the d the d transfer the d (laughs) d. (laughs) give me that d okay oh my god oh help me it's late okay (laughs) He also convinced her to transfer the deed to a property she had in Texas to a man named Alexander Bond, who was his alias. God. So he's, so he's like, just transferred the deeds over to, to himself. himself. But he's like, oh, it's this guy named Alexander Bond. And then he served as the notary and got her to sign it over to Alexander Bond, who's also him. Uh, and then he proposed to her and said, why don't you invite your sister Annie to Chicago to meet me and see the hotel? So she invited her sister Annie to Chicago and she, he even gave her a personal tour of the hotel. And while he was in, in his office, he asked her to get a file out from his safe. And he locked her in the safe mm. and turned the gas valve on <gasps> and killed her. Oh, no. And then soon after, Minnie vanished, the sister that he was proposed to. so Disappeared. They both just vanished. And then he moved to uh, Texas to, to their property where that he had just gotten the rights to because they were both dead. Um, wow. Then he decided to, like, just roam around the U.S. and Canada. Um, yeah. I mean... Why not? I know after I do my killing, I need to just take a walk. Just, like, road trip around. Yeah, just some self-discovery. Yeah, like, see some, you know, nature. <laughs> <laughs> so he actually got caught in St. Louis uh, for selling mortgage goods. He was in jail for a brief time, but while he was there, he started a conversation with a train robber named Marion Hedgepeth. Mm. Um, he told this train robber guy that he was planning on swindling an insurance company out of $10,000 by, uh, taking out a policy on himself and faking his own death. And he told this guy, the train robber guy, if you can find me a lawyer who will like help me pull this off, like a, like a sketchy lawyer who is willing to be in on this plan, I'll give you $500. Oh, okay. So the train guy was like, sure, uh, here, I know this guy who'll help you and he has a law degree. Um, instead of faking his own death, uh, Holmes decided to have someone else fake their death instead. Enter Fashezel Mapezel. What was his oh. name? Oh. Patezel. Fashezel Menezel? Patezel? Yeah, that one. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's the one. <laughs> uh, so Glad his, to be of service yeah, for you. Thank you for that. His partner in crime, 
Petazel, agreed to fake his own death so that his wife could collect the $10,000 life insurance policy and then split it with Holmes and this sketchy attorney they had. Okay, cool. Right. So um, the plan was that Patezel would set himself up as an inventor named B.F. Perry, then be killed and disfigured in a lab in, uh, explosion. Huh? And Holmes would find it like look alike cadaver to be like, oh, look, he's dead. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I get it. But no, I don't want that. No. Um, <clears throat> so instead, Holmes decided to chloroform Patezel and set him on fire. <laughs> oh, casual. That's how I handle things, too. So he collected the insurance money. It killed his, like... Only friend. Yeah. His only friend. And told his wife, told Patezel's wife that he was actually in London. Like, he didn't tell her Uh, that he died. He's like, oh, he's in London. Like, just... You'll catch him. (laughs) Laying low for a few months while we, like, pull off the scheme. And he somehow convinced her to give up her three children. What? Three of her five children to his custody while they waited. You know, he really (sighs) knows how to make a sales pitch. I'll say that. If he's able to do it, I'm almost impressed. It's that sociopath thing where he can just, like, convince people. be charming and charismatic and... So the wife had no idea what he was going, what was going on. Um, He basically traveled through the U.S. and Canada with these three children. The entire time convincing this woman that uh, her husband was, you know, in London and that everything was fine. Uh Uh-huh. Meanwhile, he forced the two girls, Alice and Nellie, into a large... Oh, I wrote drunk. I meant trunk. I think you were drunk when you wrote it. (laughs) Drunk. He forced them. (laughs) And then he, what, passed out in your bed after we have a podcast episode? Help me. He forced them. This is so sad. He forced them into a large trunk. Locked them inside, drilled a hole in the lid, put a hose through it, fed gas into the trunk, and fed gas into it. Then buried their naked bodies in the basement of the rental house they were staying at in Toronto. Feed them ice cream. Why couldn't he just? Why couldn't he just feed them a drunk trunk? Give them a (laughs) trunk. He made them drunk. I think Christine's dream is a drunk trunk. Yeah. What is that? I want. I guess you just bathe in Cabernet Sauvignon. I don't know. Oh my. Oh my. Do you think if you sit in wine, it turns, your whole body turns purple, like how your mouth turns purple when you drink it? Yeah, because, you know, when they do those grape stomping, like those, their yeah. legs turn purple. Oh, really? Yeah. That's kind of like how in Wizard of Oz, when they would dye the horses in jello. Oh, really? That's why if you watch Wizard of Oz, uh, some of the horses, like they're licking themselves and... Oh, how weird. Because they didn't have another, like, animal approved way to, right. to dye them. And yeah. They had to be, like, brightly colored. So like I think I think it was like a purple horse when she finally meets the uh, Wizard of Oz, and like their horse is outside of the Oz Castle or yeah. something. The horse is like can't stop licking itself for oh the whole God. scene. <laughs> it's because they covered him in purple Jello, which is adorable, but also really fucked up when you remember that Jello is made of horse feet. Oh, it's made of gelatin. Yeah, <laughs> so it's like he's mm. licking himself. Like Poor his baby. his parents or something. His parents. I don't know. I'm sure it was. Well, imagine like you're just like eating something off your body, and you're like, "Oh, this is made of human." Oh, you know. Yeah. But it makes me look pretty. I don't know. The world's a dark place. Thank you, Em. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> As why is we drink. my mind. That's why we drink. Anyway. Okay. So he buried their bodies under the rental house. Mm-hmm. Um, at this point, there was a detective who was already coming after him, and he tracked him to Toronto and found the decomposed bodies of these two girls. And he noticed that Nellie's feet had been cut off. Oh, cool. And he remembered that she had had a club foot, oh. this detective. So he was like, oh, probably the reason he did that was so that they wouldn't identify her body. Mm-hmm. And, like, no, you know, it would right. take them longer right, to right, figure right. out that who makes so they poli- the police then tracked him to Indianapolis, um, where he had bought drugs at a local pharmacy to kill the boy. So he had killed the two girls, and then he That's went to up. Indianapolis from Toronto to kill the boy and bought drugs at a local pharmacy to do it. And he, bought, uh, he had gone to a repair shop to sharpen the knives he used to cut up the little boy's body <gasps> before burning it. They discovered the little boy Howard's bones and teeth in the fireplace, of the house that Holmes was renting. Mm. 
So at this point, uh, the train robber, Marion Hedgepeth, right. was pissed because he was never paid. And <laughs> what's his name was like, Holmes was not following through on his word. Right. Why would he? He had a lot to do. <laughs> he was really he busy was, cutting feet of his off mind. little children. He did a lot of his mind. Um, so in retaliation, he went to the police um, with the information he had, like mm-hmm. that he had learned about him in jail. Uh, so the police kind of used that to f- arrest him in Boston in 1894. And the only way they were able to hold him after arresting him was because there was an outstanding warrant for horse theft that mm. he had in Texas. It wasn't like, oh, you've murdered of hundreds of people. But it was, you stole a horse one time. Right. Um, so the police decided to go to Chicago to his castle and check it out. And were just beyond horrified. What'd they find? So the caretaker who worked there told him he was told the police he was never allowed to clean the second floor. Mm -hmm. They spent an entire month going through the hotel, trying to uncover every torture chamber, every secret passageway. They found women's hair, a woman's shoe, a piece of gold chain, um, which they determined to be Minnie Williams, one of the sisters that he had killed. They found a pile of human bones mixed with animal bones, a dissection table covered of covered with blood and a pile of bloody women's clothes in the basement. Um, there was an entire, like, lime pit where he would just throw bodies and they would all decompose. Oh. So, like, they didn't even know how many bodies were in there because oh. they would completely decompose so in the lime. Um, he, they could only confirm nine murders. Like, they only found just enough. Just nine. Only, <laughs> right. Only nine. Right. Uh, they only found enough bodies to, like, actually confirm nine bodies. He confessed to 29 murders. Um, but most people estimate that the number was, uh, as high as 200 people that he So just killed. nine needles in a needle stack. You know? <laughs> what? Like, they're all dead bodies. Nine bullish. needle. I'm trying to, like... I don't know. It's so late. Let's just... <laughs> I'm just slap happy. Yes, I'm. Nine. Yes, that is what it is. Just smile and nod. Just, yep. Yep. Let's go with it. I'm not wrong if you're thinking the way I am. <laughs> Uh, oh, said Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Thanks. Real talk. I know. And that's why we drink. And that's why we drink. Uh, okay. Then Hearst newspapers were like, we'll pay $7,500 for your story, which today is $216,000. Oh, I would, I would tell them whatever they wanted to know. Yeah. So basically he was like, sure, I'll tell you my entire story. But the problem was that he kept telling different versions of it and would, like, make different numbers of who he killed. Like, first he said he killed a certain number of people. Then he said 29. Then he, before, right before he died, he said two. Like, he just kept changing it. Then he changed, like, his childhood. And and then he even claimed that he murdered some people who were still alive. He made, like, hundreds of thousands of dollars just telling the newspaper who he murdered, which is just so fucked. Mm-hmm. Um, first he claimed he was innocent, then later he claimed he was possessed by Satan, so whatever. Great. Um, for fun, I looked up his final meal. I love it! I know, I, I just needed to know. It's so boring. Uh, Boiled eggs, dry toast, and coffee. Ew. Which is like what I eat every morning for breakfast. Yeah, but like, that's literally the thing that's gonna make you the happiest. Uh-huh. That says a lot about you. Like, give me some, if I'm dying, give me some chocolate chip pancakes for breakfast. At least. At least. I mean, I feel like that says a lot about him when that was the most, like, in, like greatest thing in his yeah. life, in his real non-murdering life. And I get that it was, like, the Dry early toast. 20th century, but also, like, there's, like, pie. You could get, like, a yeah, you fucking like, pie. There's, like, sugar cubes that you can feed your dead horses. <laughs> what? <laughs> you know how you feed them? Didn't he have horses that died? Or he did something with horses? No. What the fuck? Oh, he stole a horse oh, one time. Stolen horses, not dead horses. It could get sugar. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so tired. Maybe. Okay. All right. He ate dry toast. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it wasn't even the early. It was literally the 1890s. Okay. Okay. So there was definitely like more than just sugar cubes. He could have gone to a candy store. There were probably pies. Yeah, I don't know why I'm sure hung up pie. on that, but like... I don't know either. I'm sure there were pies. There were definitely horses. He could have fucking eaten a horse. I don't think they allow that. Well, I don't think they allow murder either, Christine, but... Oh, you got me there. 
<laughs> but that shit happened. God, stop drinking so much. <laughs> no, dude, they, wait, oh, wait. What year was it? The 1890s? 1896. Okay, so he still had like 30 years before the milkshake, so it's not his Oh, time. shit, yeah. But they definitely had wine. They had wine. He could have had fucking wine. They had booze. Mm-hmm. What a dummy. Okay. On May 7th, 19, or I'm sorry, 1896, Holmes was hanged at Moyamensing Prison. Uh, for the murder of Benjamin Patezel, his good friend. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, Holmes's neck did not snap. Mm. He instead was strangled to death slowly, twitching for over 15 minutes. That's like Yankee Jim from the Whaley House. Yes, it reminded me of that too. Yikes! This whole thing is like reminding me of the first two episodes. Aw, happy 10th. Oh, how sweet. Mm. Oh, it's like a throwback. Oh, we forgot to celebrate that it's our 10th episode. No, we didn't. We definitely talked about this in the beginning. It's been so long since the beginning of this episode. (laughs) It's almost been an hour. It feels like a really long time. Okay, uh, so he was murdered and then, oh, he was hanged and then it took him 15 minutes of twitching, uh, and he was pronounced dead 20 minutes after he had been dropped. Um, the quote that is often associated with him that he said in prison that just is twisted and kind of goes to like his whole mental tendencies is quote, I was born with the devil in me. I could not help the fact that I was a murderer. No more than the poet can help the inspiration to sing. I was born with the evil one standing as my sponsor beside the bed where I was ushered into the world. And he has been with me since. Poets don't sing. All right, Em. <laughs> I'm just saying he wasn't even right. I kind of get what he was saying, though. You're what, right? you do? Do you do the ush- the evil one ushering you into the world? <laughs> no, but I mean, like, I get the, like, he probably, I, I imagine he was born with that. I don't think with he probably. With the tendencies, yeah. I don't think he chose that life if he had any moral bone in his body. Yeah. Well, you like he was a sociopath or something? I don't know. I think he, I think he probably did not choose that life. I think it chose him. All right. Well, he also you murdered know, a bunch of like children. Like an OG. He was the original serial killer. Serial killer. But he least. killed a bunch of children. Like I can't like feel sorry for him. Oh, I don't feel sorry. I'm just saying I he may not be wrong. He may I mean, no, I like he's wrong for killing. I'm saying he may not be wrong in that he like he couldn't control himself. Oh yeah. Maybe. He also lied a lot though. So like at one point he was like, "Oh, I didn't do anything." Right. And then he was like, no, it's the devil. And then he was like, oh, no, I only killed two people. <laughs> okay, so maybe there was, like, some mental issues it's there. It's just, like, who knows what the fuck. I think he just was, like, a Saving liar. Saving his ass like whenever a, he could. Yeah, I think he was just a liar. And then he's like, look at this dramatic quote. I can, I don't know. He also wore a bowler hat, which I thought was he did. hella dumb. He did. He looked like a fucking idiot. And he had that mustache He looked thing like going a on. creeper and a half. Yeah. I don't trust anyone that wears a bowler hat. No, you shouldn't. Or a fedora. No, no. No. It's not Okay. And that's the, that's a good message to take away from this. There's actually a, like when he was buried, this is just tell me such a fun cap to the story. Uh, he asked for his coffin to be contained in cement and buried 10 feet deep because he was worried that grave diggers or grave robbers would dig up his body and dissect it. Oh, like, you know, I know what I did to everyone else, so God forbid karma uh-huh. come and kick my ass. He's like, I did this to 200 people and children and dissected their bodies and sold their skeletons. I like how he's willing to write ahead of time that he wants to be buried in cement because he's afraid of that happening to him when he was lit. It's like, oh, you, do, you don't like that happening to your body? Interesting. Uh-huh. Yeah. Fucking interesting. He spent his entire life doing that to children, men, women, and, and children. He's, he's like, oh, no, but don't do that but to me. Like, but I'm worried that someone's going to touch my skeleton. It's like, like, I bet all those people were also worried about that, and you fucking and like, did it. they did that for him, and it's like, he was on death row, and you were like, we'll pay all this money to, like, bury his body in a cement cube? Yeah. Like, I would have dissected that body. I would have intentionally skinned it just for fucking uh-huh. fun. I would have sold that skeleton to someone <laughs> good for you good for you I don't know who but i would have sold it <laughs> i would have done something real bad yeah i would have put it on someone's face <laughs> i would have gotten a little kid and started it all over again yeah and started the cycle <laughs> so that's fun um and then actually they went back uh the caretaker of the hotel actually committed suicide soon afterward uh. they found his body in his bedroom at the hotel with a note that said i couldn't sleep Oh, that's so sad. Which is just so dark and awful. And his family said he had been just, like, <sighs> miserable. Like, he had spent months just, like, with hallucinations and, like, trauma. And oh, then he killed himself. That's so fucked up. Um, and there's a book on this called The Devil in the White City by Eric Larson. I haven't read it. It's really famous. It's supposedly really, really good. 
Um, and then currently where this hotel used to stand is currently uh, a post office, the Englewood branch of the Chicago United States Postal Service. So that's fun. Hmm. Well, that's a, that's a nice way to end this. Let it. <laughs> it's now a post office Yay! that you can go to. Probably be just as miserable there as you would be if you were at the original hotel. I wonder if there's any ghosts haunting his old castle. The post office? The post office. Probably. Yeah. There's bound to be something. I don't know. I'll, I'll, let, you, I'll let you know next time. The next time you go to the Englewood branch of the post office? Well, I mean, next time I'm on Google and I research it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> or next time I'm just globe trotting and That's find myself at a use post office. Stamps.com. Oh. Are not sponsored. What the hell was that? You know that they're a sponsor on podcasts all the time. Stamps. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. We'll have to contact them. So that's a legitimate sponsor. That would have been a great segue. They missed yeah. out. Yeah. They missed out. We could have been like, you we'll don't want to go to the post office? Use stamps.com. We'll send them this haunted. episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll let them know. Definitely. They would love this episode. Good story. Yeah. So that's fun. Yeah. Anything? You're good? I'm good, dude. Look at G. I'm just as tired as he is, man. He's literally twitching in his sleep right now. Yeah. Aw. It's been a struggle. I don't know what. We just. Something in the water. I'm tired. I'm sorry. I'm, I don't know. I just got slap happy for about a minute there. <laughs> I felt really stupid. I was like, oh, no, I'm going to ruin this episode. That does not ruin. It. Let's be real. I mean, we've we've found many other ways That's to ruin like the episodes. The impetus of our episodes. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. Thanks, guys. That was a good tenth. Thanks for if you're still here. Thank you. One day we'll have a one hundredth episode. Oh shit, dude! That'll be crazy. We'll be crazy. Yeah, I just said that. I'm just trying to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thank you guys for. Um, listening in please uh support us however you can uh if that means by doing patreon that would be awesome uh or you can write in your stories and help us out with the next listeners episode Mm -hmm. which comes out may 1st we have a contact form on our website now and that's why we drink.com so you can go and submit your story there and it'll go straight to our email um or you can just become friends with us on twitter go to atwwd podcast facebook twitter instagram um and check out our website and our patreon and i just said all of this i'm just summing it up send us some love uh, okay this is why christine does it at the end because apparently <laughs> i'm not allowed to have the last word you are okay. i'm just summing everything up into a one sentence all right well i hope you guys have a good week until the next time you get to hear us tell you an amazing story <laughs> i'm trying to let you have the last word <laughs> no i i don't want it anymore and that's why we drink. <laughs> this is and literally why we drink. <laughs> hopefully you drink too, so we're not alone. See you on episode 11. <laughs> Bye. Bye.